Hello and welcome back everybody. <coughs> Sorry. Here is again an exercise case for value addict tax and what happens is uh, simply what follows. The import export tree MBH, so a juridical person with um, place of management and registered office or statutory seat, however you call it, in Cologne in Germany has been involved in the following events. First, they ordered a machine from the US for a price of 100,000. The machine was sent by ship to Germany and the import expert GmbH had to go to the German customs authorities and pay the importation VAT there. A truck full of flowers was bought from a Swiss supplier for a net amount of 20,000. And according to the contract, the customer, that is the import expert GmbH, was responsible for the customs formalities and the payment of the importation VAT. However, when the truck had already crossed the border, the importation was postponed until the truck would have reached its destination. And during the time while the truck already drove through German territory, the import expert GmbH had a good idea and already sold the complete contents of the truck to a wholesaler for an amount of 30,000 plus VAT, if VAT arises, so in the correct amount of VAT, and the obligation to fulfill the customs formalities and pay the importation VAT was by contract transferred to the wholesaler. At the time when that contract was concluded, the truck was near Frankfurt. A Chinese wholesaler sold then a machine to the import expert GmbH. The machine was in full fulfillment of that contract sent from China to Cologne. The contract was established, however, by the help of an electronic marketplace. Let's call it DBay. And the price agreed upon was 100,000 euro. The commission which the Chinese seller had to give to DBay amounted to 10% of these 100,000. And last but not least, the import expert GmbH bought a certain amount of coffee for a price of 200,000 euro from a South African producer. And as they directly found a customer for that coffee in the US, they ordered the South African producer to directly send the coffee from South Africa to the address of the import export GmbH's customer in New York. And the price which the US customer had to pay to them was 250,000. So this is rather a nice list of events where we have to deal with. And let's just do what we always should do if something is complicated. Let's just begin at the beginning. And that is what we are going to do immediately now. So let us have a look concerning or on that case here. And first, probably we start with event number one. It would be a good idea to um, have a small sketch what happens. So we have a US supplier. There is a machine. And um, that machine is bought by the import expert GmbH. Uh, the price is 100,000 euro. And the um, machine moves from the US to Cologne. Um, yes, so, and the customer pays the importation VAT. Okay, so that is everything where we have to deal with. And so <clears throat> let us have a small look. So um, the test is, sorry, wrong color. Paragraph one, one, number one, because number four, the importation VAT has already been done by the customs authorities. 
So do we have to deal with an entrepreneur? Yes, the US seller is one. C paired of two, one sentence, one and three, USDG. They um, sell things. So what they do is an independent activity aiming at revenue um, and they do it in a sustainable way. So on a constant basis or however you call it. Is that within the enterprise? And the answer is yes. See paragraph two, one sentence two. Everything what an entrepreneur does, um, the main activity and the ones to the left and right side, the ancillary activities are also covered. Is it for consideration? Yes, they demand a price. Is it a delivery of a good? And the answer is yes. See paragraph three, one USDG. The machine is a good, a tangible good, and sale is a transfer of ownership. So that is the case here. Where is the place of delivery? Well, the basic rule here is paragraph 36, sentence 1, where the movement of that good <coughs> towards the customer begins. That would be here, the USA. Um, but to test is the um, deviating rule of paragraph 3a USTG that applies only if the seller pays the importation VAT. That is not the case here. So place of the delivery remains USA. That is not in the inland of Germany and not of any other EU state. So not taxable at all. This event is then already finished. What we could do for reasons of safety is just to have a look again uh, if these citations which I did here from my memory are correct. So 3.1, 3.6 and 3.8, they are worth a look because the case depends on them. And um, we are going to do this shortly and then we are going to go on. Okay, so here it is, um, deliveries of, yeah, a good by an entrepreneur are activities by which he um, enables some, the customer to dispose about a good in his own name, so transfer of the position of an owner. And that was correct. So 3.6 is the next citation we have to check. Um, if a good which is delivered is dispatched by the supplier, the customer or somebody else um, who acts for one of the two, then the place of delivery is where the dispatch begins. So where the movement of the good towards the customer begins, that's right. And 3.8, that was a special rule which we tested and where we said it does not apply in this case. The place of delivery is shifted to the inland in just the case when the deliverer pays the importation VAT. That's not the case here. And so up to now, we have cited all these things correctly. So our solution for the first case is correct. And so we can turn to event number two now. So event number two was um, a truck full of flowers and the seller was a Swiss supplier sells a mass of flowers to the import expert VMBH and um, then we have a second event the import expert VMBH sells these flowers to another customer.
square 30,000 plus VAT if necessary. So we have two events here. Let's have a look to 2A. Um, the Swiss supplier sells, sorry, Swiss supplier sells the flowers. The first check we have to do is taxability and we test one by number one because number four has already been dealt with by the fiscal authorities. So we have an entrepreneur, we have within the enterprise uh, or scope of the enterprise we have for consideration, uh, all that is yes. And um, we might give reasons or we might not. It seems to be clear here. See, let's say paragraph two, one, sentences one and three, or respectively sentence two of the USDG. For consideration, there is no reference necessary and existing. It's a delivery, paragraph three, one, USDG, yes, flowers are goods, and selling is transfer of position like an owner. So the place of delivery of these flowers is under basic rule, paragraph three, six, USDG, um, where the movement of the flowers towards the customer began, that's um, Switzerland. The exception in paragraph 3.8 USDG does not apply because it is here not the supplier but the customer who um, has to pay the importation VAT. See the tax. So that is not taxable because place of delivery not in the end. And so one of the five criteria is not fulfilled. So everything's fine. Okay, so now let's deal with 2B. The import expert GMBH sells the flowers to another customer. We have first to check taxability. And that is again test one, one, number one of the USDG. And import expert GMBH is an entrepreneur, acts within the range of the enterprise, does it for consideration. Uh, we leave the reasons out because they are boring. It is a delivery, yes, paragraph 3, 1, USDG, um, flowers are good and selling is transfer of position like an owner. Place of delivery. Now, if you sell goods which are, are already in transport, um, according to a traditional view of the German fiscal authorities, if you just sell something by handing, on, by handing over the transport documentation, which allows you to later require or demand handing over the goods from the haulier, um, then that would be in their idea, a case of 3.7. That means that um, it's a delivery without movement of the goods. However, if you see what really happens, then when you hand over ownership to the customer, then the haulier just drives on to the new destination. So at the moment when the haulier gets the information, um, they change the direction, you have a new customer. From that moment on, a transport begins, and so one could also see it as a delivery connected with the movement of the good. In both cases, you arrive to at the same outcome. So either it's paragraph 3.7, then it's the place where the goods 
are at the moment when ownership changes. And that would be here, Frankfurt. Because at the moment when uh, the contract is concluded and um, the documents are handed over, the truck is at Frankfurt. Or it is paragraph 3, 6, sentence 1, the place where the movement of the flowers towards the customer, that is the new customer, begins and that's also Frankfurt. So probably one could quarrel in court about that. What is the right uh, reason for that? What the outcome would be? It's Frankfurt that's in the inland so no affair is taxable. Now you remember probably that uh, these goods have not yet been subjected to importation VAT. Uh, the case says when the truck crossed the border, there was an arrangement with the fiscal authorities that the importation was postponed until the truck would have its destination in Germany or wherever in the EU. So we have a case um, that a good is sold, it's taxable, but it might be tax free. The good is sold before importation and the payer of the importation VAT is the customer or a customer of the customer. So we have to look up. There was a tax exemption for such things and so we need to find it in the tax act. Let's make a small stop and look if and where we can find that tax exemption and what it exactly says. Okay, so let's have a look here in paragraph 4 of the German Value Added Tax Act in number 4b. There is a tax exemption, which you perhaps remember. Tax exempt is the delivery of a good, which happens before the importation of that good. And that is the case here. The flowers are sold. It's a taxable transaction because they are already on German territory. But the importation has been postponed and has not yet taken place. So our exemption is possible. Now let's check the conditions. If the customer or somebody acting on behalf of the customer does the importation formalities. Um, indeed, that is the case because according to the text of the case here in event number two, the flowers are sold and the customer gets the task to um, perform the, the importation formalities. Um, so that means our delivery is tax free. The conditions for the tax exemption must be proven by the entrepreneur, which makes it possible to check them with easily and without doubt. That can be assumed here because we have the information that the importation takes place later. Um, so yes, for number 4b gives us a tax exemption here, so we can write that down. So it's tax free, sorry, tax free under paragraph 4 number 4b USTG. The tax base is um, only for declaration purposes. The net amount where well, everything is here net, that's 30,000 euro because the rule um, in the contract was 30,000 plus VAT, whatever it is, and here it is zero. We have no tax rate and no tax amount. We have um, the taxpayer, that's the entrepreneur. Uh, now the taxpayer here doesn't have to pay a tax, but only has to fulfill the declaration duties and other things. The tax arisal, well, there is no tax which arises, but there is the duty to declare the tax, and that is at the end 
of the preliminary declaration period during which the delivery occurs or is effectuated or made and so on. Everything um, here is fine. No peculiarities and um, input tax claims if there is any input tax related to that delivery for the import export GmbH and you have seen they acquired this thing in a way which was not taxable so the only input taxes which could perhaps relate to that was legal advice by a tax advisor a lawyer uh, services of a holder or something like that but if there is any input tax at all related to the transaction then this remains deductible under paragraph 39 number one usdg in spite of the tax exemption naturally you can only deduct the at which really happened so from the acquisition of these flowers you can deduct nothing because there was no VAT when the input expert JMH acquired them good now this was event number two let's turn to event number three so here it is um, the Chinese wholesaler sold a machine to the import expert GmbH um, and the machine was sent from China to Cologne. The contract was established, however, by help of an electronic marketplace. Um, so for VAT law, this contract has to be split up into two different transactions. Number one, Chinese wholesaler sells to, sells machine to electronic marketplace. And number two, electronic marketplace sells the same machine to the import expert GmbH. Now let's look for the prices here. The price for transaction number two was um, 100,000. And the price which the electronic marketplace has to pay is everything they get, 100,000, minus their commission. So the rest of the money which they have to hand over to the Chinese wholesaler. That is 100,000 minus their commission of 10%. That is where the 90,000 come from. Good. Uh, by the way, this should naturally be, sorry, this should be two. Okay. Now, how are these two events? How have they to be treated? But first, I have now said this contract has to be split up into two different transactions. We naturally need a proof for that. And you vaguely will remember there was something in paragraph three about that. And we are now going to look for that rule in order to find it so that our, um, let's say, heroic allegation here that the contract has to be split up into similar two contracts of the same kind, that this allegation can be proven. Let's have a look. So when we have a look to paragraph three, paragraph three is where deliveries and services and contract relationships are defined. So um, here that was something. Paragraph three, three was about commission business. That's a similar approach, but um, not our case. But 3.3a, so in, inserted afterwards, is exactly our case. Um, electronic portal business transactions. 
an entrepreneur who via an electronic interface supports the delivery of a good whose dispatch begins and ends within the community territory to a recipient named in 3A5 uh, is treated as if he had received this good for his own enterprise. Um, now, you see, um, this does not apply here. Because, first, the customer is not a private customer. Second, um, the delivery does not begin and end within the EU, but it is from China to here. So, first sentence skipped. Not our case. Second sentence that also applies in cases which in which an entrepreneur has via his electronic portal supported the distance selling of goods which are imported from the territory of third countries in packages or send yeah, packages with a value of not more than 150 euro um, with our machine that's evidently also not true. So let's go on. An electronic interface is now defined, the distance selling in the sense of paragraph 2. Um, it's also defined. <laughs> so it does not really apply here. So, okay, hmm. that's not our case. So, we can erase that already. It was a similar thing, but it does not apply to our case. Surprise, surprise. So, let us um, bring that on paper. Paragraph three, sorry. Oh. <laughs> to format this differently. Okay. Paragraph three, three A, USDG does not apply. So the contract, because the customer is not a private customer. So the electronic marketplace does not become part of the chain of entrepreneurs here. What else? We could also try to check the special rule, but first, um, so we have still Chinese wholesaler to German GmbH. Then we have taxability, paragraph one, one, number one. Um, the Chinese seller is an entrepreneur, that's clear, paragraph two, one, USDG um, acts within, sorry, acts within this enterprise. All right. Two, one, sentence two, for consideration, demands a payment, that's all clear. It's a delivery, paragraph 3, 1, because um, it is a machine. That's a good, and sale is change of position like an owner. Um, the place of delivery, that's a basic rule. Paragraph 3, 6. Yeah. And um, paragraph 3, 6, ladies and gentlemen, then. That would mean China. Um, paragraph three, 
eight this g has to be tested who pays the importation b a t if the customer does it then hurdle three eight does not apply and the sale itself is not taxable um, that is now assumed here so in that case it would not be taxable um, however there is also a rule in paragraph 3c usdg about distance selling from the third countries into the eu and um, that rule also does not apply because um, it only applies for goods with a value of less or with goods sold to private customers again. Um, So that's it. Um, so you see, one is sometimes um, not always on the safe, safe side where one just simply guesses around. You need to read the rules, otherwise, you might be mistaken. Let's check this 3C rule um, finally to be sure there too. So, paragraph 3C1 is about um, the place of delivery of an intra-community distance sale, not our case. The place of delivery for a distance sale of a good which goes from a third territory and is imported into a diff another member state than the one in which the transport ends will be seen. Um, in that case, the place will be seen where the transport to the acquirer ends. Um, paragraph 3, 3a sentences 4 and 5 ought to be applied accordingly. That means um, these were the sentences where it was stipulated the acquirer must be a private person. Um, this is also something relatively special and some things where that is not to be applied. But uh, you can see there is no situation of um, where our case could be um, included. So paragraph 3C indeed does not apply. So it remains the base, that the basic rules apply and that our Chinese wholesaler did not uh, make a taxable transaction under the condition that not he but the customer, the import expert GMBH pays the German importation VAT. Now you were probably, um, you have probably seen from my mimic that uh, when I solved this case, I was genuinely surprised. Originally, I intended <laughs> another outcome, but when you check the law, then you see, okay, um, it's uh, a grave danger that you just overlook details if you don't read it properly. And so keep in mind you need when you have an idea it could be the solution well it could also turn out no in that case it is not so other rules apply that underlines how important it is always to check the rules and um, not to blindly just follow your first intuition well let's go to number four the import expert gmbh bought a certain amount of coffee from a South African producer. So here we have event for producer South Africa sells coffee. Um, 
to the import expert free MBH. And the import expert free MBH sold the same coffee directly to a customer in the US. Um, so we have two contracts. Then the movement of the coffee in first the producer in South Africa sold to the import expert GmbH. So uh, movement begins in South Africa. And the coffee is sent to the place where the which the import expert GmbH demanded. And they said, don't sell, send that coffee to us. Um, send that coffee to the place where we need it. And that is the US. Yeah, so the person who makes the transport is the South African producer. Sorry producer and the producer is ordered to send the goods to the destination which import expert GmbH demands that is a very usual thing in a contract you don't need to demand that everything which you buy is so sent to your private home or to your premises of the firm um, so you can also say I need it at another destination um, so they say send it to the US. Contract number two can only start to be executed after contract number one has been finished. Um, after end of contract one, the good in question is already in the US. Um, in the hands of the final customer because the trick here was the um, import expert GmbH said well I'll send that good to the place where I need it I need it at a place in New York and I will not be personally there to accept the good uh, but I give the power to take it uh, to somebody else I appoint my own customer as my representative. When my final customer gets the coffee and signs a receipt, uh, confirms reception, then you delivered correctly to me the import expert GmbH. So after that has been done, only after that, the delivery to import expert GmbH has been finished. And now, Import Expert GmbH can begin to pass on ownership to the next guy, to the final customer. And at that moment, the coffee is already in New York, USA and stays there. So the place in the second case is 37 USDG. This means surprisingly that we have two transactions um, two sales after another of the same good but only one transport um, this is a so-called chain transaction that's just the technical term for that in German, it would be called a Reihengeschäft. Um, but you see, there's nothing in that. And, um, well, the transport here belongs to delivery number one, because the South African guy has to try to ship the goods, the coffee, to the destination which his customer demanded that is um, simple and so we have the following outcome 
um, transaction number one, South African producer to import expert GmbH. That is a delivery paragraph three one USDG replaces under paragraph three six sentence one because it's a delivery with the movement of the good South Africa. So paragraph one one number one can not be fulfilled. The whole thing is not taxable in Germany and not in the rest of the EU. Transaction number two. It's a delivery, paragraph 3.1, because um, import expert GmbH transfers ownership position concerning the coffee to the US customer. Um, place of the delivery is under paragraph 3. Paragraph, sorry, three seven seven ah, the USA. That's not in the inland, so that can also not be taxable. Uh, so a mass of things which were less complicated than they seem to be at the first glance. Um, hope you had an idea. Um, and if you tried to solve these cases in advance, it would be nice. And I would congratulate you if your final solution resembles to what we found out just now. If not, redo the case later and try to, um, to find the right rules and to find the right solution. Okay. By the way, if you want to take a first glance on a special rule, which um, tells us a bit, but uh, not everything about these um, strange chain transactions, then I can recommend you a look at um, paragraph three, subparagraph six A. And this has a few pages here. Uh, and um, yeah, we will probably deal with that more often in the future. So just have a first look on it and later forget it again. Good. Thank you very much for watching and um, goodbye till next time.